Hi everybody, Kerry here from Jawwood's Bushcraft. Uh, lately I've been getting into more of the uh, 18th century long hunter uh, colonial period of, of America. And uh, I've been focusing my bushcraft um, practice, if you will, mostly just playing in the woods to being more of what the, uh, you know, the 17th century uh, woodsman would have used. Uh, the time period I'm really interested in is, is, you know, between the French and Indian and the Revolutionary War, it's about the 1760s. Um, some of the stuff I have is, you know, French and Indian War, some of it's a little later, some of it's a Revolutionary War, some of it might be a little later than that. Um, this is my kit that I'm about to take to the woods with me right now and do a, an overnighter with, you know, trying to do as close as possible as I can to what they used to do. A lot of my stuff is um, reproduction. Um, very few of his actual, like, you know, from that time period and possibly not even. I got a Hudson Bay blanket that I have no idea when it was made. Um, but it is, is a real Hudson Bay blanket. The rest of the stuff is reproduction. Um, some of it's not even actually period correct, but it's the closest thing that I have to be period correct. Uh, such as my, my knapsack over there. It's a Frost River knapsack. It's definitely not period correct, but it's the closest thing that I have at the moment. Um, but just a little bit about what I'm going to be carrying there with me. You know, I'll start out with clothing, you know. I've got regular moccasins. The moccasins are going to depend on the area that you're in. Uh, mine are closer to like a Cherokee moccasin because I'm in North Carolina. Um, that's where the Cherokees were. And uh, on up to... Uh, your, your actual clothes. What I'm wearing right now are actually buckskin pants. Um, I've yet to see anything anywhere where people actually wore buckskin pants. I've seen a lot of breeches with leggings or gaiters, breech cloths with leggings, um, and I've even seen, you know, pants such as what the uh, the soldiers up, up in, you know, more of the 1770s would have worn. And um, But, like I said, this is as close as I can get to uh, period correct right now, so I'm okay with it. Um, the shirts um, made out of different types of materials could be cotton, could be canvas, could be a mixture between lin, lin um, I don't even know what it's called, but they call it Lindsay Wooly. Um, shirts are long, reach uh, about mid thigh. And uh, on top of those, a lot of times it would wear what's called a hunting shirt or a smock or a Wagoneer smock. Um, sometimes I've seen the seen the the two interchangeable, but it seems to me that the uh, Wagoneer smock is more of a hunting smock without the uh, the cape here. But I've also seen hunting shirts without the cape as well. So this will go over the shirt that I'm wearing now. On up to headgear. Uh, some of the headgear I've seen used are these felt hats. Um, this one I've got a trim going around it. Some of them aren't. Some of them are cut. Some of them are uh, same hat but uh, actually turned into the uh, tricorn hat that a lot of people remember from seeing in the uh, like Revolutionary War pictures and stuff like that. Uh, some people actually cut this to be a little shorter. You can pin this up however you like. Uh, me I prefer the real wide brim on this hat. My hat band and I keep a pipe back here because I like a pipe. Uh, another headgear that I have that I really like is a Scottish bonnet um, similar to kind of what the what the US Army is using for a beret actually with the uh, little ball on top but um, this is another headgear that was used uh, I know Rogers Raiders used them they used uh, from what I understand typically a blue colored one uh, which from my understanding is the actual military issue style from back in that time but uh i like the green one so i got the green one by the way i'm not a reenactor of any sort um this is more i just do this for fun mostly on my property uh the second thing i'm bringing out tonight because it's supposed to dip down into the 30s um low 30s is a hunter's frock this one is just a thick canvas uh wrap around type hunter's frock um this would go over the top of my shirt and my hunting shirt and I could wrap this around to help keep me warm tonight. Um, moving on to uh, oh, one last clothing item. The last thing that I wear, um, this is a pretty handy piece of kit, 
is uh, it's basically similar to like a cowboy's bandana or a shemag. You see a lot of the, you know, guys in the Middle East and even our service members have adopted. Um, basically, roll it up, wrap it around the neck. It's there for uh, to keep sun off your neck, to keep your neck warm in the in the winter time, and uh, it's great for pulling you know hot items off the fire and stuff like that. Because you know I haven't seen any leather gloves or oven mitts or anything from that time period that uh, that the woodsman would use so you know this would be it uh, in my pack I've got a few things um, the pack I'm using is a knapsack um, I have seen knapsacks used a lot of times they're they look to be what appears to have just been a an old haversack that someone took the shoulder straps off and me or took the single shoulder strap off and made a double shoulder strap and turned it into a a backpack um, what I have is this and that's what I'll be using for my knapsack um, inside my knapsack I have a, uh, a copper tin or a copper lined with tin uh, kind of Dutch oven looking deal um, don't know if they would have carried something like this or not I've seen uh, actual folding skillets that they had um, which would be nice to have one of these days but at the moment this is what I have to cook bread and stuff like that in and I've actually got uh, some bannock mix in here with my non-period correct <laughs> plastic baggies. Alright. Uh, next thing we have is some type of boiler. Um, this is actually a corn boiler. It's uh... Normally, <laughs> it doesn't come all the way off, it just folds. Mine comes all the way off. Um, inside my my boiler I actually have bits of chocolate I have wrapped up in uh, wax paper. This is this isn't the kind of chocolate you would normally see in stores uh, nowadays. It's it's bitter chocolate. There's no sugar added to it or anything. But you would take chunks of this, put it in your water, and uh, boil it up to make a make you know a boiled chocolate, kind of similar to like a hot chocolate. And in this, I have sugar cubes. Um, at that time, sugar was sold in a cone. It was a compressed cone. That they would scrape off and uh, mix with their their boiled chocolate to make it a sweeter sweeter drink. I'm using sugar cubes wrapped up in wax paper, and it all goes in this leather bag inside the boiler. I have my tin cup, of course, to drink out of. Um, pipe tobacco and pipes. That's a clay pipe, and then a bone pipe, and then I've got another clay tray pipe here. Uh, next, I have a fire kit. And this is kind of going to go go towards the top. Inside my fire kit, I have a tin that holds char cloth or uh, charred punk wood or something like that. And then I have a flint, the steel, and then another tin to actually make the charred flint or the charred uh, punk wood or the char cloth. And then I have my non-period correct sharpening stones. It's an axe puck and then a uh, this is a soft Arkansas stone. I carry leather lace with me to, uh, you know, to, because you just never know when you need it to repair stuff, to tie stuff, uh, things like that. Um, over here, of course, I've got my belt knife and my belt axe. This one is. Actually, kind of an earlier style. Um, this was actually more of a, uh, a, a Viking style bearded axe, but uh, I've been using it for this purpose because the tomahawks that I have and the ones that I've tried, um, while I enjoy using them, they're just not quite as effective as a regular axe or uh, something of this nature. And this one's got it's it's a tomahawk style kind of axe half breed. It's got the uh, axe shape, not fully rounded. Um, so the handle isn't a super round handle, which means as I'm swinging it, it doesn't have the tendency to roll like a tomahawk would. And I really enjoy using it, and that's what I'll be using for the time being for my period correct stuff. Next I have my belt. This is going to actually be worn on me with my belt knife and my axe. And then a belt pouch, which was made by my wife. Uh, rabbit fur on the top, and then just leather on here. The rest of it, just different colors of leather. And it's tied up with this thong here. Inside this, I sometimes carry my sharpening stone. I carry 
another fire starting kit, a compass, and my watch. The last thing that I carry is water. This is just a typical canteen of that time period. It's the half moon shape. There are other types out there. There's leather, wood, even other tin uh, canteens that were used. Uh, this happens to be the one that I'm using at the time. So uh, stand by and I'll get this stuff packed up and I'll show you how that works.